Back in March of 2020, news broke about a live-action Jurassic World series entering development. The Jurassic World franchise was set to expand into new territory, break free from blockbuster films, and into the realm of television. Steven Spielberg's own Amblin Entertainment was set to develop the series with the director himself taking a producing role alongside Colin Trevorrow. But news about this exciting first for the Jurassic franchise quickly faded away and the idea of a live action series came to a close in early 2022 with producer Frank Marshall shutting down the idea. Fans were left with many questions, the main being, of course, what actually happened? The Jurassic World franchise has certainly opened itself up to expanded content, and a TV series seemed like the perfect opportunity to tell more Jurassic stories. Ones that aligned with the movies, but perhaps filled in gaps in the timeline, or even helped bridge the gap between the Park and the World trilogies. Well, I guess it was never meant to be. My name's Jack from Jurassic Outpost, and today we're going to be exploring what happened to the live-action Jurassic World series. The third entry in the Jurassic World trilogy had just begun filming when news of the live-action series first broke. Amblin Television, a division of Amblin Entertainment, had begun developing the series and enlisted Colin Trevorrow and Steven Spielberg as producer. The series was being developed by Daryl Frank and Justin Falvey, both presidents of Amblin Television with a wealth of shows under their belt, The Americans, The Haunting of Hill House, Falling Skies, and Extant, to name a few. The primary production location was listed as Vancouver, Canada, which is a film and TV hotspot and was actually close to where Jurassic World Dominion had just begun filming. At the time, we didn't know what the plot might be, no story details had leaked, and there was no real indication on the direction that the show might go, but the series was said to be part of the same continuity as the films and would have had ties to the, at the time, upcoming Jurassic World Dominion. This all sounded great. The end of Fallen Kingdom had introduced us to a world where certain populations of dinosaurs had broken out of containment and were spread across various countries. Battle at Big Rock, the short film, showed us a glimpse of this world, a national park in the state of California where families encountered some of these escaped dinosaurs. A live-action Jurassic World series could have brought this idea to the forefront and shown the audience an expanded world past this point, where humans don't exactly live alongside dinosaurs, but share certain areas of the world with them. Perhaps the show would have established locations that we see in Dominion, Malta's Black Market, the entire landscape at Biosyn, we could have had a deeper look at these locations through the eyes of a television show, and in turn, learn how they came to be part of the Jurassic story. The show could have also explored the origins of the Jurassic World Park, shown us the park in full operation well before the Indominus Rex disaster. We could have met new characters who worked at the park, had encounters with dinosaurs that we didn't get to see in the movies, and maybe even explored some of the secrets that Dr. Wu was hiding. But unfortunately, it just wasn't meant to be. Jurassic World trilogy producer Frank Marshall shut the idea down in an interview with Slash Film back in January of 2022. He said, No, I'm really just focused on the movies, so I haven't really thought about that. There's been no discussion of that. As I say, we have the animated series. I think that's plenty for now. And that was that. It appeared, based on Frank Marshall's comments, that the show didn't progress past the early development phase and was no longer part of the plan for the future of Jurassic. Needless to say, this was disappointing to hear at the time. The Jurassic Park franchise has never truly had the chance to reap the benefits of the television series medium, and up until the animated Camp Cretaceous, any efforts to expand the story via a series had been cancelled. Of course, fans will always want to see more, but the franchise clearly has more stories to tell. A live action series would allow the filmmakers to experiment a little and do things that the mainline movies couldn't do. A television show presented an opportunity to tell stories that align more with the first trilogy, or even take audiences back to that era. Television is a different format to film in many ways, and perhaps the darker, suspenseful horror side of Jurassic could have been explored in episodic format. Now this is not a comparison of Jurassic World and Star Wars, 
But the Star Wars franchise is a good example to look at when it comes to the way that Lucasfilm and Disney have handled the expanded stories, the timeline, and the overall management and presentation of the franchise as a whole. Both franchises wield storylines that span multiple decades. While the expanded universe of Star Wars stories spans hundreds and thousands of years, the core Star Wars films are grouped into three trilogies that chronologically span nearly 70 years of time. In clear association with the Star Wars brand, this timeline is clearly defined, presented and adhered to. Disney Plus provides the audience with the entire catalogue of Star Wars stories and the social media channels, not to mention StarWars.com itself, are thorough in their presentation of franchise knowledge, facts and honestly any information you could ever need. The time and story gaps between the three core Star Wars trilogies and between the individual films within those trilogies are currently being filled in by both animated and live action series and shorts. The Mandalorian, Andor, Ahsoka, The Book of Boba Fett, Star Wars The Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels have given fans expanded, grittier and more character focused stories while still living within the world and conventions of the Star Wars universe. For fans and the general audience, these shows and media help piece together the overall franchise timeline, fill in gaps in the story and help bring in fans of all ages through very unique characters, settings, story tones and plot points. And they are also willing to serve fans by portraying story events that had been previously spoken of but never seen, with significant cameos when they are justified. As of 2023, the Jurassic franchise's core films are grouped into two trilogies that chronologically span 30 plus years of time from the first film to the last. And there are very strong narrative opportunities and fan desire for more stories to be told. Jurassic's current expanded universe contains Battle at Big Rock and Camp Cretaceous, which provide glimpses into expanded stories and the timeline aligns with the current Jurassic World trilogy, but it pretty much stops there. The franchise as a whole possesses a number of incidents, characters, locations and moments in time that are primed to be portrayed in a live action series or another type of series to add even more depth to the lore and backstory of the franchise. This is not to say that Star Wars has done everything perfectly, it is however to say that Star Wars has done a lot more and has managed it well. Of course, Star Wars has been around about 15 or so years longer than Jurassic so it's had a little bit more time to evolve, but to quote Dr. Ian Malcolm, the Jurassic franchise is in a great position to read what others have done and take the next step. A clearly defined franchise timeline, coordinated brand presentation, a live action series, and more media filling in the timeline and story gaps are what the Jurassic franchise and brand need for an effective and exciting future. Camp Cretaceous has given fans of the franchise more time on Isla Nublar and at the Jurassic World Park. The first season took place before, during and after the Indominus Rex breakout and introduced us to six new characters, campers who become stranded on the island. The show, at least in the first and third season, retained a solid Jurassic feeling, if you can define that, but the fourth and fifth quickly entered wild and wacky territory. The show could have solidified itself as a tie-in series to the movies while also telling new stories, but the plot lines that were introduced from season four onwards took the show in a completely different direction and it quickly fell out of alignment with the films. We know that the follow-up series to Camp Cretaceous is called Jurassic World Chaos Theory and maybe that's why Frank Marshall was hesitant to get behind a live action series. Perhaps the plan was always to continue Camp Cretaceous in some respect and have it align with both Fallen Kingdom and Dominion. At the end of Camp Cretaceous season 5, we see Darius a couple of years later. When he hears something in the woods behind his bedroom window, he spots a Brachiosaurus one of the very species that escaped from Lockwood Manor at the end of Fallen Kingdom. Could this be a hint at what's to come? Will Chaos Theory align with the outbreak we see at Lockwood Manor and concerning characters in the real world that have to deal with this dilemma? It could bridge the gap between the Jurassic World movies. We recently caught a look at the trailer for Monarch Legacy of Monsters, an upcoming live action television series based on the Godzilla IP and part of the MonsterVerse franchise. With many returning characters from the recent Godzilla movies, the show appears to take place during two separate timelines, one in the 1950s and the other half a century later. 
the show will expand the timeline of the MonsterVerse even further, while telling what appears to be character-driven stories surrounding the people trapped in the middle of massive creatures reclaiming their rule of the Earth. From what we've seen of the show so far, it could lay down the canvas for what a Jurassic show needs to be, a gritty, slightly less popcorny exploration into the world established in the films and the smaller stories alongside that world. While Monarch takes place in the 50s and then the modern day, a Jurassic show could take place in both the 1980s or 90s during InGen's development of the first dinosaurs and the construction of Jurassic Park as well as in the early and late 2000s during the construction, development and dinosaur happenings of Jurassic World. Many fans are keen to see a prequel that focuses on John Hammond prior to Jurassic Park and of course show the construction of the park itself. A live action series could show us what has happened on and what became of Isla Sauna. Wouldn't it be cool to see Site B before and maybe even during the hurricane? and perhaps the show could even reveal the origins of the Spinosaurus. As we've said, there are just so many stories and opportunities in the world of Jurassic still to be seen, so the cancellation of the live action series feels like a wasted opportunity. The movies have raked in billions and I'll be the first to tell you that box office figures don't make a movie great. But the popularity is there, and if handled correctly, a live action Jurassic series could really hit the mark for a wide variety of people. So I guess the question on everyone's mind is will a live action Jurassic series ever see the light of day? While we don't know what the future holds for Jurassic, it's safe to say another movie is not in development yet. With a sequel series to Camp Cretaceous happening in 2024, it would be exciting, and also the right time, for Universal and Amblin to develop a live action series, especially while Dominion is still relatively fresh in people's minds. While this particular series appears to be dead in the water, you never know what might be cooking up in Amblin's lab. What kind of dinosaur they cooked up in that lab? One interesting thing we thought worth mentioning is the Steven Spielberg produced Amblin show Life on Our Planet, it may be the result of the Jurassic World live action series being cancelled. Perhaps the budget and early development assets were moved across from the Jurassic World series and onto life on our planet, especially if you look at how similar the Triceratops is to the Jurassic World model. But this is all speculation, of course. The Jurassic franchise is at a pivotal point. With no movies on the horizon, you can bet that the studio is having the appropriate conversations to continue the story but how the story will continue is anyone's guess. We think a well-written television series that dives into the science and balances the adventure, one that takes note from the original Michael Crichton novels and tries to align itself with both Jurassic Park and The Lost World is the way to go. But we'd also be intrigued to see a Jurassic World series in the not too distant future, one that continues the story from Dominion in a world populated with dinosaurs. Jurassic has so many characters, locations, and storylines that deserve a return. Let's hope the studio agrees. But what do you think? What do you think the Jurassic World live action show was going to be? And what kind of TV series for Jurassic would you like to see? Would you like to go back to the origins of John Hammond's work? Or would you like to see the future after Jurassic World Dominion? Share your thoughts down below in the comments and thank you for watching the video. Be sure to hit that subscribe button for more Jurassic.